All right, we're back. Um, if you guys watched the last one, um, Daryl was just prepping some art stuff, making messy stuff. Well, prepping on art, art, his art stuff. Well, my art stuff, I should say. Um, yeah. All right. So since I'm behind, we're doing multiple in a row. So um, oh, next one up uh, for the August second. Ah, uh, ninja scamming accusations expose a growing problem. And we have fire spiders. All right. Well. Want to go? Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Buckle oh, thank up. You. Make sure you subscribe. Because I am. We're going to be sweating $10,000 across the Damn, son. subscribers this month. And let's just jump in. That's a lot of money. The first thing that we're going to talk about today is this dumb motherfucker out of Springville, Utah. So there was this absolutely massive wildfire that ignited somehow out of nowhere yesterday. With those flames ultimately consuming around 60 acres before luckily being doused by a rainstorm. And as far as what actually caused the fire, it turns out it was spiders. <gasps> kind of. Like it was wow. spiders Nassles. in the same way that if I was in a car and I saw a snake and I wanted to run over the snake and instead I like slammed into a pole. It was the snake that crashed the car. Because late in the afternoon when firefighters arrived on the scene, they encountered a all man right. with his dog who immediately confessed to accidentally starting the fire. Because apparently this all happened because he tried to kill a spider with a lighter. But instead he caught a bush on fire which led to all of this. So now he's been How arrested stupid on fire related he? charges. Though uh, it doesn't appear like that was the only thing he was blazing. With police also reportedly finding marijuana and drug paraphernalia in his backpack, which they're charging him for as well. And as far oh, as what the authorities have to geez. say, uh, regarding trying to set a spider on fire, they said, quote, please don't do that. And it hurts my brain no, that the police even need to say that. But it turns out, like, this isn't, like, the only time this has ever happened. And arguably the other time, the guy was unequivocally dumber. Because that guy tried to use a lighter to burn a spider while the spider was sitting on his gas the tank shit? at the gas station. Although, at least that moment gave us the clip of employees mocking the guy. I don't like spiders, huh? You know what they say about spiders? Let me get my lighter here and burn that spider off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But ultimately, with this, uh, idiot. two things. One, don't be an idiot, please people. don't do this. And two, isn't it just such a fun thing to know that these people's votes equal your vote? Like, both of you have the equal ability to mold our country. Isn't just that why fun? America's so stupid. Yeah, entertainment news. We had actually gaming slash entertainment news that was blowing up past the normal audiences that would consume it. But the first story being about Nadia Amin, who's one of the fastest growing female streamers in COD and Warzone. With all this starting because Nadia actually hit this insane clip, which if you've ever played Warzone, you, you just can't deny how impressive this is what's impressive oh, this clip right here proves why I am the best female warzone player well you'd expect that clip to go viral instead what went viral was oh before we continue what is impressive about that exactly she got what was that 4k 5k a lot of people can do that unless of course you're talking about the throwing knife Shot and then it's on scale one to ten. It's like two or three impressive. It if you play with a throwing knife and now if you're going to know how to use it, you're, it's not that impressive. If you it was the first time you picked it up and you threw and like like randomly threw or like kind of threw. It's like oh that's gonna miss. But I just wanted to try to do it and actually hit a guy. That's impressive, sure. No matter who you are, but if you use like I don't know who this person is. Um I um uh I don't know who this person is, but. I don't know. I. It's not that. It, it's a 4K, right? It's okay. Sure, a lot of people used to get. That's a 4K is. Care package if you don't have hardline. 5K is a. Airstrike or Sentry gun. I think if I remember. it's been a it's been a while since I played, um. But I don't. Okay, okay, she got four or five K. Like, I've seen other people do that. And it, it was sped up. You can tell it was sped up. So she had more than enough time to between everything to like readjust or anything like that. If it was like four people coming at once or like she got third party, but it was able to like take out the first team, then the second team. Sure. Yeah, no, that's impressive. But it was one at a time and she just. Doing, 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 chained it together. That's all it was. It's, I'm sorry to say, it's not that impressive for anybody that has played regularly. That is not that impressive, and for her to say that is why I'm the best female Warzone player. 
What makes you good? I bet there's a lot of other people that could do that. You're just the best, probably more famous one. There's going to be others out there that can do it. There's going to be other, no matter who, like, just because you have the audience doesn't mean you're the best. That just means you're the most exposed of it all. Sorry, it's just... It's an edit. Of I also don't someone like superimposing her face cam Call over Duty. a game where you're washing dishes. With that, then leading to the likes of Jake Lucky posting the edit on Twitter and saying, what it's like to be a woman in gaming. This is Nadia, one of the fastest growing female streamers in Cotton Warzone. Hits a nasty clip and first thing to happen is a TikTok making fun of her that now has 450,000 likes and nearly 3 million views. In a response to that, we saw two very different reactions. Some saying things like, I'm so fucking tired of women being treated like subhumans by boys in gaming. If your ego is that fragile, go do something else. Female gamers are not a threat to you simply because of their gender, grow the the fuck up. Major creators like Hassan Pike are also chiming in saying this shit is so corny, especially because these girls would shred most of the insecure weirdos trying to cope. But also we saw pushback. People saying things like snowflakes everywhere for fuck's sake. Modern Warfare 2 lobbies were a hundred times worse. As well as she's an insane gamer, but fuck this world is becoming way too sensitive. Can't say half the shit slash do the shit you could 10 years ago. The world's gone soft. She needs to look at the fact that it got views. Plenty of people will see that clip and watch her. That's a positive. Get over it. But with all that said, as far as what Nadia herself thought, she was... Okay, I see. I see the thing about her. thank you, people. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, no, the old lobbies were super fucking toxic. The amount of people that you'd have to mute because they would just be ear deafening and or like you're trying to play and all of a sudden, um, a lot of explicit e word is not coming to my brain right now to be able to say it, so I'm gonna say vulgarity. It's absolutely ridiculous and. It's people, if you criticize someone, people say, oh, you have a fragile ego. Oh, man, shut the fuck up. They're just expressing like everyone's going to meme stuff. It was a fucking meme, right? It's and like I said before, it was it was a four or five K. OK, she struck. It was sped up or at least it sure the fuck look like it. If Call of Duty has those. Like, it's increased uh, speed and stuff like that, because, like, perks or whatever. Holy shit. I don't know. I don't play any of the new Call of Duties. The last one, I really... I played a Warzone for a little bit, but then it just wouldn't work. And that was two-plus years ago. Um, the Call of Duty before that, I think, was... Black Ops 2? Modern Warfare 2? Something like that? Uh, when I played, like, regularly. So it's been a bit. So it's been a bit. So the perks might do that, or there might be new shenanigans. Because I know they also introduced exoskeletons, just like that, a couple of Call of Duty's past. But if, from what I remember of Call of Duty, if they haven't done that, if Warzone is like the older stuff, um, that was sped up. You can tell by some of the reactions and stuff like that. It was sped up, which I'm sorry to say makes it not that. It knocks down the impressiveness of that. Um, like I said, it was one shot, like, like she, she just chained it together. If it was all together, or, like, there was two people, and she got the double kill, and then, like, before she could fully reload, another person came, and then she, like, switched her weapon out, and, like, did all that. It'd be a little bit more impressive. But she had enough time. She, like, even reloaded anything like that. She was using, it looked like, um, without having to go back, it looked like it was, um, like, a submachine with a, a small clip in it. So it's like, all right, she could have had, a like, a bigger mag and stuff like that a different weapon but if it was her favorite whatever whatever people are gonna like what are you gonna say that i'm now misogynistic that i have a fragile ego because i'm saying that that clip wasn't good no it was objectively not that good and it might have been good for her but in the grand scheme of things it was objectively not that good and there's gonna be a lot of other people like i said that could do a lot better than that that would have had them the kills like closer together because they're more grouped and everything like that people need to smart like grow up it, you're online too like if you don't have a thick skin online you're fucked now there's a difference between having thick skin and constantly being bullied and stuff like that and that's that'll be something for not a reaction video but you have to have at least a little bit of a thick skin if you're going to be online and that edit <laughs> It was an edit. It was a funny meme edit, right? Like, um, I've watched other YouTubers that have had clips of their stuff go, and they've done stuff. Like, if they've used um, face and stuff like that, not just gaming, but, like, um, they've done different things. And what they did is funny. People just clipped it and then turned it into a meme. 
it's a meme. The internet's going to meme where it memes. The memes don't have to be good. Doesn't mean they're not a meme. Like, it... Yeah, no, it's... Most people don't have a problem with girl gamers. It's actually, if I remember correctly, when I was taking um, game design classes, it was actually girls gamed more than dudes. It's just guys, or boys, I should say. Um, it was boys that were more like, open about it, like more out there. So it seemed like it was only the boys doing that, which then trans transitioned into, you know, um, men. But it, I, if I remember correctly, I would have to find my, my, my books on it. If I remember correctly, it is like women play more. It's just they're usually more closeted about it. Most people don't care. If you're good, you're good. If you're bad, you're bad. If you're funny, you're funny. It who who cares if you're male or female? Like it, don't always make it about that. Make it about the fact that people made a meme. Oh well, it is they're right. The you Americans always want free speech. Freedom of speech to do that. And yes, on the other hand, freedom of speech to mock the freedom of speech. But people are like, oh, you know, this would be a funny meme. Did that? People like it. It's like, ha, ah, that's funny. Oh, well, if she got, if people recognize who she was from the edit and still went to her channel, she'd still be getting more people to watch, which is a good thing. If they, even if they came in like, oh, this is actually not the game that I thought you were playing Wars on, bleh, she could still talk to them and potentially get them to stay and everything like that. I've, d I've done that in stream before. I've had people come in super toxic from games I played, and I've just calmly talked to them. It's like, hey, you know, just talked to them, did all that, stayed calm. And I ended up getting them as followers and stuff like that. It's, ah, oh, man, I don't know it. People are making a big deal on the fact that it's, oh, it's a big, it's a, it's a female. Like, who cares? Let's play a little thought game here. If you took that same clip and a guy did that. Would it be such a big thing? And then instead of di uh, clean dishes, they did a workout game or fixing a car, right? The stereotypical man thing to do. Would it get as big as stuff? Or would people just go, ha, 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 and continue on? They're making a big deal out of something that's not a big deal. Like, oh fucking well, just continue on. And this has also gone on a long ass time already, and this is only the second story. Eh. Hi, Matt. Responded by thanking people for supporting her and saying, We cannot let this type of misogynistic hatred take us women down. I will never ever give up on what I love doing, and neither should anyone. We keep going. And as far as my opinion on this, is this edit tame? Yeah, but is it also annoying, dismissive, and disrespectful to someone that's just enjoying a fucking thing purely based off of their gender? Yeah. Also, as someone that was in those Modern Warfare 2 lobbies, shut the fuck up. Someone yelled a bunch of expletives about fucking your mom and, and said a bunch of slurs while eating their microphone and all of a sudden, like, you have valor? Stop talking about it like you went through war, you little bitch boy. Like, I don't think you know what a sad little sack of shit it makes you look like. And with this story around Nadia, yes, you could say it's tame, it's just one situation, but it does highlight a very real issue. There have been reports where nearly 80% of women in gaming said that they experienced gender-based discrimination while gaming. Literally to the point that nearly 60% of them say they mask their identity to avoid harassment. But yeah, that's the situation and my current thoughts as a former edge lord that used to think 15 years ago that like, haha, women make sandwich in the kitchen was the funniest shit ever. It's not, it's cringe, it's stupid, grow the fuck up. And then in the- It- <sighs> People make a big deal out of that. It's If you want it to not be a big deal, stop giving them a platform to do it. People keep making a big deal because they know it's like, oh, it's going to get traction or anything like that. It's Who cares? If they're playing a game, they're playing a game. It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. If you start getting harassed, if you're starting getting, if you're a female and you start getting harassed, I can guarantee you that there are going to be people that don't carry your female and we'll actually say, hey, 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 little kid, shut the fuck up. Play the game. I've experienced it because I've had female gamers in the network that I and like they play. And without even us in the call having to and go and like, hey, kid, shut up. 
We've had randos that didn't give a fuck. They're like, okay, cool. It's just another gamer. Oh, well. And they would criticize them if they did bad or they praise them if they did good, just like they would do any other person. It's these little kids, and I don't mean just age-wise, but mentality-wise, that are fu- are fucking shit up and like making all this stuff. Most people don't care. Yeah, there's going to be salty people about a game if you win. Oh, well. It's a game. If you're getting... If you're getting too angry at pixels on a screen, then just stop playing it for a bit and calm down. It's it's a game, man. You're supposed to have to be there to have fun. If you're starting to do all this stuff and take it as like, oh, this is misogynistic, this is blah, blah. I can guarantee you about... I'm I, Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit more conservative on this one. I'm going to say about 80% of people don't give a fuck you're male or female they're just there to play the game if you do bad they chastise you if they do if you do good they either stay silent or go hey good job stop feeding the trolls that's what these people have to understand is they're feeding the very vocal minority the like less than 10 percent just stop feeding the trolls and you won't have a problem that's all you can do but you guys keep feeding the trolls so it's going to keep being a problem and at that point Who's the idiot? One can argue the trolls, but also at the same time, the people that are feeding them. You know, if a person's hitting themselves in the head with a hammer, and they go, Doctor, it hurts. And the doctor's like, Stop, stop hitting yourself in the head. And they keep hitting their head with a hammer, and it's a person with a hammer as well. Stop feeding the trolls, and this won't be a problem. Now, I'm not saying there's not issues. Like I said, there's a vocal minority that will be like misogynistic and everything like that. But also, on the same token, there's going to be a minority, a vocal minority of women that are, um, I don't even know what the f- fucking misogynistic is, is men de- derogatory to women. I don't know what the women derogatory to men is. Um, there's that. But most people are like, oh, whatever the fuck, whatever. So, I mean, stop being the trolls and all this, these problems go away. Shut up. If you're if you're an online content creator and you see this shit and it happens, you can ban them from your chat, you can ban them from your community, and if they keep coming, you can just ignore it. Don't let it affect you because that's what they want. They want it to affect you. The, like I understand, there's only a certain amount that you can you can um, deal with everything like that. But the thing is. If you've done what you can, if you have said, hey, you know, stop. Like if if they said it was a, uh, she was a streamer, they're like, go into chat. It's like, hey, stop this. Theoretically, they have mods that will ban the person. But if people keep on going. They can time out people. They can do that. They can also just like take a step back, right? Take a step back, kind of decompress, recoup everything like that, even if it's a day, two days. And, and if you're fear of losing some of your people... Because you're taking a day or two, you can do other things. You can do offline work. You can edit. You can, if you have um, like a Discord and stuff like that, you can interact with them there. Or even do like a private stream on the Discord so that only Discord members um, can see it. It's There's lots you can do instead of just keep feeding the trolls. I do realize that some of that I came back and said multiple times, but stop feeding the trolls. That's all you can do. But people always give, always give a spotlight to trolls, and so people are going to keep on trolling. Trolls are going to get more powerful. So ignore the trolls. And yeah, I realized I rambled there. My apologies. The other bit of gaming entertainment news, we had Tyler Ninja Blevins. For a while, he was one of the biggest names in gaming. And even though he doesn't still pull the same numbers, he still matters in that space and beyond. Being one of the select group to break out into the mainstream, deals with Adidas. Also, as the reason we're talking about him today, he actually has a masterclass, which if you're unfamiliar, is this online subscription service where experts in various fields and industries guide you through tutorials and pre-recorded lectures. I think four four out of five of those people. You can learn how to talk to slash interrogate people all the way to developing an original TV series with the Duffer Brothers. You know, for Ninja, this has be a pretty big achievement though not his biggest achievement ever because remember the guy we're talking about in his own words was once in the middle of carrying a league of legends game about to close it out and his brawless wife brought him a sandwich not asked for with chips as he got a double kill bot lane i'm about to bust but still who the fuck cares who cares so (laughs) so your wife was being being nice and bringing you some food Oh, well, there's a lot of people that have significant others that is like, oh, 
your streaming, your recording, whatever. Here, here's some food. You, you know, you got to take care of yourself. I understand. Like, most streamers will know that unless, of course, chat, you have like a hydrate button and chat redeems it. There's people know that there's going to be like hours you go without drinking. And because you just get stuck, sucked into like the game or whatever you're doing, like talking with chat and stuff like that, or like stretching and stuff like that. Oh, well, she brought you a sandwich. Who the fuck cares? Also, it's League of Legends. whoop de ding shit. And if it's a bot lane, it's not like it was against a person. The bots literally just do predetermined things. If it was against a double double team person, maybe that'd be a little bit more impressive. But it's a fucking bot lane. whoop de ding shit. They're in the top 20. But possibly bringing Blevins down are people dunking on him over his masterclass. To the point where you had people asking him, is this just a cash grab or is this just a scam? Which I will say, I think is a word that people throw around far too often these days. But as far as the notable specifics, you have Ninja teaching people yeah. how to quote, become a streamer. With that course is a description reading, build your streaming presence in 30 days. It appears that much of the criticism seems to be stemming from a video posted by YouTuber Drew Gooden. A video that notably quickly shot to the top of YouTube's trending videos. And in the video, Drew included some examples from the course itself. It's That's plug and play for reason it may seem a little scary but it's not there's tutorials that's a lie on the internet uh ninja i don't know if you i don't know if you know this you're filming a tutorial don't outsource the work to someone else just tell me how to do these things while i'm here it's so funny to hear him describe the things that he does well in like an analytical way see i'm wearing my hat i'm clearly doing a funny voice headphones were upgraded the uh my my hair was blue now we're getting somewhere these are actionable steps wear a funny hat and dye your hair actually how many times he mentions his blue hair in this class okay so we have ninja blue hair right i dyed my hair blue hair everyone thought okay now blue haired person me dyeing my hair blue oh, and the hair the hair my hair was blue it's almost like he's convinced himself that one of the secrets to his success is that he dyed his hair a funny color and then of course it's just the naturally unobtainable aspects of the course like how to become big online or branding and marketing with drew saying yes those are important topics but ninja doesn't really do anything tangible in that he just sort of lists his own accomplishments and like i said there are tons of examples i'll link to drew's video down below but essentially he describes the course as being very front loaded with some useful content and then just dropping off, having these shorter videos that just kind of ramble on. But Drew also saving up some of that criticism for Masterclass itself, saying that during lessons where Ninja was detailing step-by-step -step tutorials on his computer, you couldn't even see the screen. This happens multiple times. It kind of makes me think that they just forgot to record his screen while he was doing this section, and instead of attempting to recreate that B-roll, they just gave up and put nothing there. It's so bad. That's not even Tyler's fault, you know, but it does show a general lack of care. I want to say something, but no way. So in response to all this, we started seeing comments pop up, like Masterclass always seemed like a scam to me. But others saying that he's just exploiting his audience by putting out some half-ass Masterclass. We've also seen big streamers reacting and saying that they do the exact opposite of Ninja's advice. The Weathers have also offered up some defense saying, I think most people take online classes for entertainment, not knowledge. Which, I mean, that may be what? the case for other people. I don't, <laughs> but you know, people People consume content for different reasons, so I guess I won't uh, completely throw that away. But ultimately, with all this, as far as my opinion, just a few things to say. One, will I consume this masterclass? Please don't. Not a fucking chance. Good. But two, do I think that this is a scam? No, we gotta step, like, if you think that it is subpar, overvalued, a cash grab that doesn't provide value, Call it that. That's not a scam. That is just a shitty product. And if you're going to make this argument of him exploiting his audience, that's pretty much any creator that makes money in some way. Like just by definition, <laughs> they are deriving value from a resource. You paid subscription sponsors getting awesome clothing like that. Link down below to beautifulbest.com. Why is that shitty? That just backwards. reflects poorly on the person that made it and is putting it out. And then the market will react how the market reacts. Also, I will say almost everything you. No, 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 no. FDM printer, re-level. Resin printer, make sure the FEP sheet is okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. You want to learn is out there for free. And I don't mean like Pirate Bay free. I mean like YouTube free. There are genuinely very sure. few creators that I would pay for any sort of tutorial or class. The only two that immediately come to mind, uh, Mark and, and I'm sure there are plenty of others, but those Ugh. two stand out in mind specifically because they like guide you through specific projects. And if you can end some class or tutorial series actually having done something, created something, used a rubber have I mean, that that seems like a huge class. value. Also, Casey, if more people buy your class, like if you see a bump, I expect a 
fucking check in the mail, Casey. And that is where I'm gonna end this story. But the question I have here, has there been a class that you paid for or just a, a free tutorial online that's been the most beneficial to you that you would recommend? Let us know in those comments down below. Oof. Um. Okay, I was trying. I was trying not to pause that in the middle of the story there and do that. That hurt my brain. That story hurt my brain a little bit. Um. I don't know what the. I don't know what the. If anybody buys that class, other than like the creators that are just doing it just to see how shit it is, and they can just write that off as a business expense. Mm as the old saying goes, shake your head, you're stuck on stupid. Um, just from those clips, just from the clip, like I have no interest in that. I've never, never watched Ninja. I have had no interest in that. Um, if I remember correctly, he got his start as a Fortnite streamer, which that in itself is just shit. You know, Fortnite is absolutely rubbish. I've made my views on that plain. Um, I guess anybody watching this is new to my um, community and stuff like that. I have explained why as a player it's shit and someone that's uh, game design trained is shit. Its mechanics are fucking weird, man. But unfortunately, that, those mechanics are per starting to permeate the world and the gaming world and other stuff. But anyway, um, the plug and play. Let's break this down from what I remember. Plug and play is absolutely bullshit. Not true. Um... In order to become a streamer, I don't necessarily mean a content creator. Um, so the, the difference being streamer, from at least from my point, streamers are generally people that just turn on, like go to stream, they stream whatever game they're going to do, um, and then they talk with their chat, and then if they make money, cool, no big deal, because they have uh, like a day job, night job, whatever. Like they have, they have a job outside that they take care of, finances with everything like that. And they just stream just a game. Oh, sorry, excuse me. They stream to game and to um, have a community and chat with them and everything like that. Uh, unlike content creator is trying to make it their job or it, it is their job. And the, they stream the games and everything like that, chat with their chat and everything like that. But they're, they're also trying to make videos and they're trying to like plug all their social medias and everything like that, trying to get big enough so they can survive off of everything like that. Um, to be a streamer, you need to uh, know at the very least basic computers because you need to ha know how to set stuff up. You need to be a stand-up comedian, essentially, because you need to be entertaining. Um, if you're not entertaining, people people watch you pretty much for entertainment or um, because they're trying to learn something. Like they'll watch like the best. They'll watch the like, world championship, world champion, sorry. Um, or like pro professional league, pro league um, players, anything like that, so they can try to learn to get better at the game. Those generally are the two um, reasons people watch streams. So if you're not entertaining and you're not good, then you're fucked. Um, you, so to plug and play is absolutely bullshit. Um, if you're using a one PC setup, you need to have um, everything set up on your one PC and make sure that uh, your PC doesn't overheat with the game you're playing plus all of the streaming and everything like that plus all of your your audio levels have to be good um you have to have your alerts and your everything like that for when people follow raid sub um cheer uh, if you have any sound alerts in your stream using either like sound alerts or blurps or straight off um for the channel points and stuff like that uh you have to have all those audio balance so it's uh, oh god it's so that's computer Sound comedian, like low level um, audio engineering, um, cin cinematography, because if you're using a webcam, which normally I don't use a webcam, this is the only time I really ever show my face is when I'm doing these things. Um, you still need to know cameras. You still need to know like what looks good, how the um, lights will work, everything like that. Make sure they all do um, work well so you're not like blowing out or you don't look weird or like look, look too much like a ghost on the coaster. You're going for that thing. Um, So that, and that's just for streaming. Now, if you want to go con online content creation, you need to know all that stuff because as an online content creator, it's generally streaming is part of that. So you need to know all that stuff. And then you also have to be um, a director because you have to know how to, if you're not going to turn your streams into usable videos for YouTube and stuff like that, you need to then 
go and record separate videos, but you also need to know kind of like what you're wanting to do, anything like that. So you have to kind of plan stuff out a little bit. You're going to be a graphic artist um, because you need thumbnails or anything like that. Or if you have stuff in, if they like pop up in the video and everything like that, if you're making a reference to something, you have to pop it up. You have to make sure like the flow is okay, everything like that. You have to know social media some because there's a whole bunch of different social medias. You have to know like what, because each one has their own thing. You gotta have to figure out all that stuff out. So his his comment on it's plug and play, as simple as that. There's lots of tutorials. Absolutely. Well, the whole lots of tutorial thing is true, but it is absolute bullshit that it's just plug and play. Um, there's gonna be constantly problems. I can guarantee you, if you even if you just stick to streaming, you're gonna have technical issues. Probably if you do it like three or four times a week, you're probably going to have at least a technical issue once a week, once every two weeks, no matter what you can have like a good setup. You can follow like a professional, uh, to like, if you look up YouTube and like, it's a, it's a professional streamer, it's like, I, I use these items and I put it this way. I have it set up this way. You're still going to have problems. Um, a core is not going to work properly. Um, one of your pieces is going to be, um, not working properly like for like, uh, your monitor or like your computer or something like that. Something's going to go happen. Something's going to happen. And you're going to have to fix that. And a lot of people don't realize that when they start to stream, they're like, Oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's like, okay, you should have done a little bit more research. Um, and you can't learn, you can't know everything, but you should still do a little bit of research. Um, a little, little bit of research. So that's like the bullshit. And then his whole thing of, um, he wears a funny hat and he had blue hair. I can guarantee you nowadays, and even like back, because it's only been a few years since he like blew up, if I remember right. Unless, of course, clock is all derpy in my head. Um, it's only been a few years. Nobody cares that he's a highlighter head. Nobody cares that he has a bright colored hair. It's, it's, it's a distinguishing feature, sure, but that's just because if people don't know his name, they're like, oh, the dude with the blue hair, and most people will be like, oh, okay, the Fortnite player. As a weird hat, most people have their own thing. And unless, of course, he constantly used that, and it, and it wasn't just like a couple-time thing or um, like a user redemption and stuff like that, oh, well, most people have their own thing that they do. Um, it's no big deal. The whole point of you streaming is trying to stand out, but unfortunately, with a lot of people trying to... A lot of people see these big streamers, and they're like, oh, if I do this, I'm going to get discovered and stuff like that. It's not true. It's not true. Twitch has a very low discoverability. So how these streamers got big is either they've been big since before the streamer boom um, or and or they have wicked networking, which unlike what people say, networking does work. Um, and they also do social media. So they in order to grow pretty much on Twitch, you have to grow elsewhere and then pour your your, your viewerships over. So they could have. um. And just because something works on Twitch doesn't mean it's going to work on another social media and vice versa. So nobody cares that you have, it looked like a stuffed animal hat. Nobody cares. Maybe a couple people, a dozen or so at most, but comparably to a couple thousand, nobody cares. I'm sorry to say it's nobody cares. <laughs> From that, I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's show, Squarespace. You know, I've been partnering with Squarespace for years now. And I have to say, if you're getting your business I'm off the ground, just or creating a place to share your homemade to... goods, new favorite hobby, current obsession, or even a personal blog to get all Do this quickly. out of your head, no matter what, for code fill to get 10% right. off your first purchase. And then, then that so worked. some interesting but quickie news, starting with hobby games. Do you play them? Yes. And because thanks to the pandemic, that industry is booming right now. Right back in 2019, $1.68 billion worth of hobby games were sold in the U.S. Interest, and Canada, yeah. then jumping to over over $2 billion in 2020, and then hitting $2.69 billion in 2021. I mention this for two reasons. Ooh. One, I highly recommend it. When I say it hobby games, I'm talking about things like role-playing, tabletop games, board games, card games, miniatures, stuff like that. My wife and I have recently picked stuff up over the last year. Uh, one of my favorites is definitely Sherlock, which, which is just like a mystery investigation game. You can actually play that one by yourself or with a group, and oh my god, so fun. But also, two, I mention this because if... Uh, quick thing about miniatures. Um, be careful on, on companies, um, be careful on companies that will overcharge you. There are a few companies that, um, are workshops for their games that overcharge you for their, their stuff. Um, 
and it's not really worth it. It's pretty much like if you want if you want to play that game or be into it, you've got to be a uh, multimillionaire, and then by the time you're into it and stuff like that, you'll you know be decently well off to buy to pay rent and bills, and that's about it. Um, type thing. If you're going to get into miniatures, if you're going to get into a lot of um, pretty much like non-board games, so pretty much uh, tabletop games and stuff like that, um, look into 3D printing. Um, so if you want like Dungeons and Dragons, right? Um, if anybody has played any game or ran a game, you know, mini- miniatures, there's theater of the mind, which is people describe what it is. And that's all you do. But there, it's good to have a tactile, like battle map, tactile, tactile, yeah, tactile, tactile, um, battle map with miniatures. They don't have to be the best painted miniatures, but as long as there's something there to represent what it is, it's good. Um, so for that purpose, a resin printer is really good because that's good detail and everything like that. And you can, it's better for the small scale FDM, which is the um, plastic printers are better for like a larger, like giants or, well, I mean, resin can work on giants, but it's, um, anyway, FDM would be for like scenery and stuff like that. Um, but for, for miniatures, so if you want like your own custom character, um, if you want your own custom character, if you want a whole bunch of like goblins or orcs and stuff like that, or like a nice dragon, resin printing is good. It's also going to be a little bit cheaper than getting um, pre-made miniatures. Uh, the initial setup for res- for 3D printing is a little bit expensive, but it p- pays off in the long run. Um, that's good. And then it's also a good way because then you can paint too. Um, if you're into art at all, it's a good way to paint. Um, you might not be the best, so don't be discouraged right off the bat. You're not going to be the best, but you can like paint and it also works on like your hand-eye coordination. It works on your patience and everything like that. And like you can paint and everything like that, have nice miniatures, and it gives you a creative um, outlet. Which is really good. So that's also be careful of dice. If you're gonna play games like Dungeons and Dragons, be very careful you don't turn into a dice goblin. Um, and that is something that just collects a bunch of dice and always wants more dice. It's a, it's a, it's a slippery slope. You're gonna get your first dice set. Then you're like, oh cool, that dice set looks good. Oh that dice set looked good, and that one. And soon you're gonna have big bags of dice. They like I'm never gonna use most of this stuff, but they look cool. So be very careful. All right, just just wanna let you guys know. If you like hobby games, I would love your recommendations. What are you playing and why would you recommend it? I know I'm only speaking to 1% of the audience here, but I'm intrigued. Then, please use your dishwasher. Your country is begging you. According to reports, in U.S. households that have dishwashers, one in five just aren't used. That's 17 million households that just go... Nah. And reportedly it's because people have this perception that dishwashers are inefficient and ineffective. But as it turns out, those people as well as all our parents who said, hey, wash those dishes by hand, they were wrong. One, if you want your dishes to be clean, load the dishwasher properly. And two, uh, according to the EPA, that new a lot. dishwashers in fact only use 10% of the water that's used during hand washing. So the next time your parents or your significant others like wash those dishes by hand, ask them why they hate the planet. And then let's talk about news that uh, depending <laughs> on your worldview is the continuation of the nightmare horror show that we're having in America right now, or just a fun little perk, uh, we go to Georgia. And that's because the Georgia Department of Revenue has just confirmed that residents can literally claim embryos as dependents on their taxes. And according to the department, the new guidance reflects the reversal of Roe v. Wade and the decision by appeals court to uphold Georgia's six-week abortion ban, which notably has a so-called personhood provision that gives full constitutional rights to any embryo or fetus that has a detectable heartbeat. And so now right. any Georgia taxpayer God. that has what they refer to as an unborn child with a detectable heartbeat from July 20th to December 31st of this year can claim a dependent personal exemption in the amount of $3,000 for each embryo for returns filed in the 2022 tax year. And according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, right. the law also allows expectant mothers to file for child support to cover the cost of pregnancy and delivery and requires the fetuses to be included in Georgia's census count. So now the fetuses will get Oops. congressional representation. Now, with all that said, while that coverage probably would be nice for people who want a baby, it's not much solace for people who are being forced to carry out a pregnancy in a state that bans abortions before many even know they're pregnant. It's also unclear how much this will actually cover the ridiculous cost of pregnancy care and delivery in this amazing country we live in, especially for those who are uninsured or don't have good insurance. But also beyond that, notably we have critics of the personhood provision saying that this creates some very alarming legal gray areas. With the likes of Vanity Fair noting, what happens if a person claims an unborn child on their taxes and then has a miscarriage? What happens 
happens if they claim the unborn child and then travel out of state for an abortion? These are obviously just two of about a million questions the new law raises. And right? we've seen similar personal Valid provisions questions. and abortion laws facing legal challenges in other states, this including in Arizona, where a judge literally stopped the implementation of the measure because it was, quote, unconstitutionally vague. And so as far as additional clarification on the Georgia law or just seeing what the hell happens here, we're going to have to wait to see. And then finally... I can see the adding, like, if you're pregnant... Because consent, the census is taken is it like every five years or ten years, something like that. Or am I misremembering something? Anyway, I can understand having like if you're like, oh hey, cool, I have a baby, I put it on the census. Yeah, that's that's understandable. Um also claiming as a dependent, what what if it has a heartbeat? It makes sense. Could be the exact same thing as if the kid is one month old, two months old, six months old, a year old, three years old. It's the same thing. They have RB. Claim it. It's understandable. I'm not gonna get into the whole abortion thing though. Um, that is a video all on its own, and I personally do not feel like I voice my opinions. If you if you're part of the community, I voice my opinions. I think it's been on stream. I've voiced my opinions, but I'm not going to make a video about it right now. If you guys want me to, come join the, the Discord, the Wizards Guild Discord, and put it in the um, video request section. But as of right now, since it's such a hot topic, it wouldn't do well to make it for the sheer fact that no matter what I say, um, even though if I, you know, lay out plain examples and everything like that, like if I just go straight knowledge, which is what I usually try to do, um, people wouldn't care and they would just hate it because I am, because I'm a dude that's saying, that has an opinion on the matter. Um, even if it's, it doesn't matter if I'm pro-abortion or anti-abortion, no matter what I say, it just won't do well. So I'm going to wait a little bit for everything to kind of like calm down a little bit. And I'm going to talk with other people because I do have um, phrasing issues sometimes or an articulation issue sometimes. So what I might do is I might write down what I want to talk about and I'm going to talk to other people um, I have a few sages that sages being people that I trust for their viewpoints and stuff like that. I have a few sages that are female. So I want to get there. It's like, would this, you know, it'll be both. Um, I th pretty sure I have pro both uh, pro abortion and anti abortion people. Um, Cause it's always good to get multiple viewpoints or anything like that to make informed decisions. So I'm, th I'm going to ask them. I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them anything like that. And then I'll make the video. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, no, I won't. But the whole, if they have a heartbeat and they're carrying it to term, it makes sense to allow them to complain them, um, claim them as a dependent. Like I said, it's the same thing as if you had a one-month-old, two-month-old, one-year-old, four-year-old. If that was a heartbeat, it's your kid. Might as well, right? If the government's giving you a chance to fucking get more money, might as well take it. Today, let's talk about the specifics of how that motherfucker Joe Biden just took $25 million out of my pocket. On Saturday, wow. at my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan that killed the Emir of Al-Qaeda, Iman al-Zawiri. Now, justice has been delivered. And this terrorist leader is no more. No matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. Joe, I was this close. Right, and so if you look. <sighs> With what he said. A threat to the American people or a threat. Uh, the threat to the American people, it would take you out. There's a lot of Americans that are a threat to the American people that don't do shit. Because I'm going to go bullshit. 
on that one. Mr. Biden, you saw are a liar. Look at that picture and you're like, who the fuck is that guy? Zawiri, who I'll now refer to just as a bag of garbage, had been the second in command of Al-Qaeda for decades until taking over after bin Laden's death and is believed to have been intimately involved in planning the 9-11 attacks alongside others. We also know that this bag of garbage's exact whereabouts were known for at least a week before the airstrike and at that time, he was visiting the home of immediate family members. Now currently we don't know the full extent of the damage as the Taliban has been relatively quiet about this, but US officials claim that no civilians were killed. But what we do know is that the Taliban is just they claim it doesn't mean it's true. claiming it was a violation Not, of the just it doesn't mean it's true. that ended the U.S.'s involvement in Afghanistan. And as a part of that agreement, there was supposed to be a complete ceasefire. But on the flip side, you had Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying Afghanistan actually violated the agreement first because they were knowingly harboring this bag of garbage. And to use the technical term, that is a massive no-no in the agreement. Al Qaeda <laughs> being one of the few specifically named banned groups. And it appears that the Taliban knew that they were found out because shortly after the attack, they made efforts to block off the scene and cover up the fact that this bag of garbage was in there. And for me personally, I just want to know if this fuck face, like if he felt safe. It's been. 20 years, the Taliban has taken back control of Afghanistan. The Americans probably forgot about me. But to that, I would say, motherfucker, we've been saying it for 20 years. The only thing our government loves more than oil is killing motherfuckers that did us wrong. But that said, in general, Good the assassination theory. has been widely praised by many Americans with former President Barack Obama tweeting, it's a tribute to President Biden's leadership to the members of the intelligence community who have been working for decades for this moment. And to the counterterrorism professionals that are able to take this trash out without a single civilian casualty, it's possible to root out terrorism without being at war in Afghanistan. And I hope it provides a small measure of peace to the 9-11 families and everyone else who has suffered at the hands of Al-Qaeda. You know, while some people in some countries will have mixed feelings about a drone strike in another country, the general consensus has been this bag of garbage had it coming. He was involved in so many terror attacks that killed thousands. However, with all of that, it is unclear right now how much this will actually affect Al-Qaeda. Right, this, more than anything, I think was about revenge and justice. Right, this worthless human being has been in poor health for years, with it even being rumored at one time that he was already dead. So many of his leadership functions had already been delegated to other group members. And thanks to this new absence, a few people could be taking up the role of the Al-Qaeda's leadership. But for now, that's where we are. There's a lot of moving parts, and we'll have to wait to see. But ultimately... A few problems with that story. Um... So, one issue that I have, that whole thing, is it took 20 years for a country that spends hundreds of billions of dollars a year on military intelligence and shit. Um, to find people living in uh, pretty much, uh, I'm safe. To, I think it's safe to say the Stone Ages. So either U.S. military is grossly incompetent, which some might argue it is, um, or they didn't really want to find the person, and it's fucked up because there's a lot of people that died over there. For what? And I won't get into the whole um, ideology of all that shit and like that, but that's just this is a thought of the whole fact that it's been twenty years and it took them that this long to find someone, especially in poor health. It, <coughs> it's not like the person could be running from um, house. To, <coughs> ooh, sorry, it's not like the person could be running from house to house, um, area to area, and stuff like that. If they're in poor health, they're going to be very slow. It should, it should be very easy to find. That's kind of fucked up. Um, and then the whole lie about um, if someone does American people wrong, they'll find them. It's That's bullshit. It's been proven that there are people that do America wrong all the time. Even Americans does America as a whole. The United States as a whole um, wrong and nothing happens to them. They're, yeah. But that's a, that's a whole other thing. And that, once again, is just from what I see here in the study. As I mean, it's necessarily 100% true. Uh, that's just what gets up to the study. Um, so just from what I see, that's what that's what's happening. Um, so if that is wrong, just let me know below and everything like that. Um, remember, I don't, I don't mind, like I love, oh man, how to phrase this. I'm trying to think of how to phrase this properly. Um, I love discussions and stuff like that, but also remember that we are all adults here, at least should be. Um, 
or we are at least we all have different viewpoints and stuff like that. So just because someone doesn't agree with you 100 percent or 87 percent, 50 percent, whatever, doesn't mean they're wrong and you're right. Doesn't mean you're you're right and they're wrong. Whatever. It's just their way they grew up, the way they see life and things like that will affect how they process things. So remember to take that in consideration when you're discussing stuff with people. If you wanted to come and discuss stuff with me or if you want to get my opinion and stuff and everything like that, come join the Discord. I do have a Discord. The link's in the description down below. It's a place of knowledge, understanding, and learning because that is the best way to do stuff, not this feeling crap that is around. Knowledge and understanding. Um, as the old adage goes, knowledge is power. Guard it well. We must protect our knowledge base. Um, a whole bunch of stuff and everything like that. Come join me across the social media, even though I very, very rarely use social media. Um, I am trying to get a little bit better at it, but unfortunately, it's just so much um, to do anything like that, trying to keep up. But come join the Discord. Best way to get in touch with me and everything like that. Come talk with other people that want to gain knowledge and everything like that. Uh, check out my other channels. I do have an art channel, which I'll be doing different paintings and stuff like that. Um, I do have a gaming channel, which... I'm sure most of you guys know me from. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys being here. Um, I understand I rambled on there for a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a long while. I appreciate you guys all being here. Remember to stay safe, stay healthy, stay awesome, because you guys are all awesome. And I'll see you guys all later.